Well, I have a, a comment. Yes. Um, it was concerning what you talked about in the first half of the webinar. You talked a lot about uh, the stories and the narratives we, we tell about our lives and our situations. And also later on, you brought up uh, the thing about maybe you've live with abusive parents or you have felt abused or you felt victimized in some way and you said by changing the narrative the, the narrative the narrative well you back you practically uh, change reality and uh, i can for myself say that that uh, i have been doing that kind of practice for maybe six seven years uh, the the practice i use is is the work by by and Katie, it's a kind of, kind of yeah. inquiry where you inquire your stressful thoughts by simply asking, is it true? And then you go into and as you said, um, you turn the story into a more enlightened version. And that's exactly what you do in, in the work. And in the work, there is absolutely no room for being a victim. It's actually very radical, mm. I say, I would say. And it's a, it's it, it's called the work for a reason because it is a big work. And uh, <laughs> I've been doing it maybe, yeah, on a daily basis in six seven years. And I can say the liberation from that is powerful. It's so powerful, and and I can so agree with you that you actually change your reality. Uh, I have before that lived a, a life with feeling uh, very victimized, and and I can say I've taken off a big chunk of that now the feeling of victimized being victimized is much more subtle but i i notice it uh, quickly mm -hmm. and as seban katie says who would you be without your story yeah mm -hmm. absolutely free it's so freeing uh, to be without those stories uh, uh, so yeah mm -hmm. just to 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 give to pass that on that that uh, it is extremely powerful uh, at least it has been for me to 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 inquire all your stressful thoughts and also just the understanding i don't have to believe my thoughts it sort of frees me from the identification of who i am and because as you have mentioned earlier the thoughts are so close that you tend to identify with them mm. and also the cultural thoughts you tend to identify with them so you can go deeper and deeper into uh, this and this identifying with with that and just in, identify with you the true nature of you and, and it's when it, it's just wonderful to to be so radically in yourself mm. because in the work there are no projection of nothing she's so radical she says everything is internal and that might not be entirely true, but it works beautiful as as a as a technique. I think wonderful Land, landing so so deeply, and it's kept me sane uh, during the pandemic and and other stressful periods of my life. And so, yeah, I can I just agree with you <laughs> that wonderful. it's very powerful to change to yeah. change your narrative. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. And you know, I I would say that in a sense, in a very profound sense, it is. It is all internal. Um, I mean, you know, ultimately in a non-dual view, we, we transcend internal, external, all these distinctions like this. <clears throat> but it's powerful to awaken at the relative level to the realization that what we consider external, which is both, you know, ordinarily we would think of it as sort of like what's outside the boundary of my body, like my environment and so on. But as we go deeper spiritually too, we, uh, we even realize that thoughts and emotions and things are also external because we can observe them and we can sort of view them as passing phenomenon that we will still hear. We're a spiritual presence that's witnessing these things. And, and so from that point of view, the internal is ultimately that witness, that, that presence, that, that awareness. And how we even perceive what that phenomena is and what the story is about where it came from and how it presents itself, that's deeply dependent on our state of consciousness. 
on, on, on not only a kind of mental narrative that we can have, but ultimately even a sort of intuitive sensibility or narrative of like, what is the true nature of this? So you can get to the point, for instance, where you realize that even things that seemed more objective, like a, a physical sensation, like hearing a sound, are still completely conditioned by your state of consciousness, how you experience that, what you perceive it as being. Um, so all of that can be radically transformed by the, the, the deep internal consciousness and the witness, the state of consciousness that a person's in. So yes, that's the, you know, uh, thanks for sharing that. And uh, I think that very much points in the same direction as to a deep sense of personal. That's It's very liberating to realize too that therefore the state of consciousness and perception wisdom that my witness, my consciousness, my presence is in is central to the whole thing. It determines whether I'm in heaven or hell or someplace in between, whether I'm realizing nirvana or I'm all caught up in a victim and part of a drama or victimizer or the all this different kinds of stories we can be going. It's all ultimately in our state of self-realization. What do we think? Who do we think we are? What do we think's going on? You know, what do we think the external, what do we think the relationship between myself and the and the so-called external is? All of that is at the heart of the whole story.